Good morning. So I've done some optimizations in Voxling that I'm quite proud about. Let's uh, fly up here first. So I worked on a new measure. I mean, I actually started a new measure about a year ago. And I've iterated on it quite a bit, just trying to optimize various parts of it. Because we have to allocate a bunch of float32 arrays and other stuff. So I worked on that. And then texture atlas stuff. And most recently, how I'm dealing with um, WebGL buffers and the rendering steps and how all that stuff is allocated or filled or copied or destroyed. Because as, like as I'm showing here, like as I increase the draw distance, we fetch chunks of data from the server. We remesh them in a web worker, which converts them into big float32 arrays. And those are fed to the GPU for drawing. So I did lots of, lots of optimizations in those areas. Namely, um, as we move through the world, I didn't want to have to keep refilling a bunch of GPU buffers with data that comes in, you know, in the distance as we walk forward. And, you know, as you walk away from something, it also has to get rid of those points of data from the GPU because you know, we don't need that data anymore. It's far away in the distance and you don't need the GPU to be trying to draw it so far away. Um, so I did some optimizations there that I hope to blog about or do another deep dive video on. So as you can see, I increased the draw distance to seven. It fetches more and the frame rate is still pretty steady while it's doing this. Now these outer bands, like as I draw farther and farther, it has to um, pull more and more chunks and mesh more and more chunks from the server. So that's why these take longer to show up because actually it's kind of going um, around. Like there's a lot of empty chunks that you don't see it meshing, of course. And then there's a lot of chunks below the ground that you do or that you don't see it meshing either. Uh, but it ends up being pretty performant. I'm still getting 60 frames per second and doing a lot less uh, WebGL buffer filling and copying than I was before. So I'm pretty proud of what this, you know, results in as far as the frame rate goes. And even if you fall pretty quickly, it's kind of it's discarding some of those chunks that were way up there. Granted, they were empty, but it does it pretty well. So if you notice on the frame rate counter at the bottom right, it did drop to 58 while I was falling because uh, it was getting rid of a bunch of chunks of data. And as I'm walking through the world, it's dipping a bit down to 51, which is not what I want, but I'm also drawing pretty far right now on a GTX 960. Not the newest GPU, but it's a good baseline, and I, I want this one to be performant because I don't really plan on replacing it anytime soon. It kind of meets my needs. So, yeah. Like I said, I'll show that um, my optimizations in the code and um, my measure stuff later. It's really kind of hard to write about meshing logic, so I need to find a good way to um, present that information visually to the reader. So, alrighty. Well, I just wanted to show how neat it is just to be up really high and see all the world chunks kind of stream in but below you, or even as you move. This way, it's just kind of neat to see it drawing, fetching, mes meshing, drawing. Oh, sorry if I'm making you sick. 
up. There we go. Cool. Let's see if we can draw another one. So we're gonna draw all the way out. We're roughly at the origin, so I should be able to see the end of the world. I'm pretty sure that's the end of the world over there. Remember that reservoir being one of the last things that we created at the edge. So I don't, oh, maybe there's a bit more of it. We might see it, oh, it comes over this way, here we go. Yeah, okay, that's the waterfall at the end of the edge of the world, cool. And right, I, I did preserve that ledge of land by that sunken lake. Okay, oh, and the rest of it's still coming in. <laughs> a lot of data to deal with. So if you imagine each chunk is 32 cubed, that's 32 cubed 8-bit integers. They're compressed and gzipped from the database, but when they come into the browser, get decompressed, and then I have to mesh all that data, pass it across the web worker boundary to the main you know, application, and then fill some OpenGL buffer or WebGL buffers with that data and then render it. So a lot of a lot of stuff is moving around to make all this work. Alrighty. That's all I wanted to show. Hope it was interesting. I don't know. See you next time.